Hi everyone, welcome to the front end interview series and this is the first video of our front end interview series. You can follow this series if you are looking for assistance to prepare for your interviews. Alright, so how does JavaScript work? Whether or not you are preparing for interviews, it's a must know for every JavaScript developer that how JavaScript actually works, right? Or you may be asked this question in a completely different way, right? You may be asked, what do we mean by the statement JavaScript is a single threaded language? So this is something that we are going to look at in this video. So stick by the end to understand this completely. Now let's say that we have a JavaScript file with us. Okay. And then we want to execute this JavaScript file inside of the browser. So here is what the JavaScript file says. It says, hi, I'm JavaScript. Can you help me execute? And listen to what the browser has to say. It is going to say, did someone say anything? I don't understand. Well, what just happened? Why are we not able to execute our JavaScript file directly inside the browser? Is there something in between that we are missing? Well, yes. This is where the JavaScript engine comes into picture. The JavaScript engine is there in every browser. Okay. And there can be different JavaScript engines in every browser. What does the JavaScript engine do? It is basically going to take your JavaScript code and convert it into machine readable code. And what do we mean by machine readable code? It is basically bits, right? Zeros and ones. That's what your computer understands. So for the browser, your JavaScript engine will convert it into code that your browser can understand. And what is inside of the JavaScript engine? We will look at in a while. But this JavaScript engine is also written in some or the other language. For example, in Chrome, we have the V8 engine and this is written in C++. Alright, so now let's understand what's actually inside of this JavaScript engine. Now let's say this is a JavaScript engine. Inside of this, there are two main things that we need to understand. The first one is the memory heap. The second one is the call stack. What is the memory heap for? Let's take this example, const a is equal to 10. You're assigning the value 10 to a variable or a constant, which is a. Now you need to store this value somewhere, right? We need to be able to store this in the memory. Well, that's where your memory heap comes into picture. Anything that needs to be stored and has some value will be actually stored inside of your memory heap, right? Now, have you ever heard of a memory leak? If you see this memory heap, right, it has limited space. There is no infinite space inside of it. Therefore, if you keep declaring variables and don't use them and you know you don't clear your memory, then you're going to have a memory leaks. Basically, there is going to be a leak. It's going to flow out of this, right? And that's why you might have also heard that global variables are bad. They are bad because they remain throughout the execution of your program. And therefore, if you keep declaring global variables, there is a chance that you might have a memory leak. Okay, now let's come to the second part, which is your call stack. What is the call stack for? Whenever you have anything to execute, any line of code will be executed in your call stack. So let's say you want to execute, you write this piece of code console log two. Now you want to execute this. What happens is this statement first comes inside the call stack. It will get executed. Once it is executed, it will be popped off from the stack. So let's say whenever you call a function, that function will be pushed onto the call stack. Once that function returns, it will be pushed out of the call stack. Now guys, here is the trick for understanding JavaScript is a single threaded language. So what do we mean by that statement? Well, inside of your call stack, you can only execute one task at a time. This is very important guys. You can execute only one task at a time inside of your call stack. You can't have multiple statements executing at the same time. Therefore, that means if you can execute only one task at a time, your program is running on one thread. Therefore, that means JavaScript only has one call stack and that's why it is a single threaded language. Some other languages might have multiple call stacks and therefore they won't be single threaded. But why are we keeping JavaScript as single threaded? Why not have multiple call stacks and execute multiple tasks at the same time? Well, we are going to introduce complexity, right? If there are multiple call stack, there can be deadlocks also, or there can be some other issues also. So for the sake of simplicity, we have one call stack and that's why JavaScript is a single threaded language. Now you might think that I have heard of the term Ajax or asynchronous JavaScript. Well, how does that work? When we talk about asynchronous JavaScript, we say that that particular piece of code is executed in the background, right? And you say that your screen or you know the user doesn't have to wait for the response 
when the response comes that time we will execute that so how is it possible that when we have only one call stack we are able to execute that in the background to understand that let's take this piece of code as the example we have console log one and then we have a set timeout function which waits for two seconds and after waiting for two seconds it is going to console log two and then we have console log three now the output for this is one three two why is it one three two because first it printed one and then it went to set timeout now set timeout is actually asynchronous that means it is executed in the background therefore it had to wait for two seconds right so two seconds we don't want to keep waiting to execute the next line so then we executed the next line first it printed three and then finally after two seconds are over we printed two how are we actually able to do this well i previously told you about the javascript engine right in order to execute your javascript code when it comes to asynchronous javascript it is not just the javascript engine that is involved there is a complete javascript run environment that we will be looking at now so we will take that code as a reference and see what happens in the background first the console log one that statement needs to be executed right so this is basically your stack now think of this as the stack so first console log one is pushed onto the stack now what will happen one will get printed in your console right output you can see here output is one now since this is executed this can be popped off from the stack now the next thing is your set timeout this is getting pushed onto the stack now guys this is very important to note here set timeout many of you might think that it is a part of javascript but actually it is not a part of javascript it is a part of the web api web api gives you various other apis for example dom dom is also part of your web api ajax is part of your web api and this set timeout is also a part of the web api so you know what your stack is going to say it's going to say well set timeout is something that i can't execute it's part of the web api so let me send it to the web api so that's when your web api comes into picture when set timeout is seen by the stack right and then what's going to happen the stack is going to pop it off because you know it can't execute that right now and then it's going to come and sit inside of your web api now web api is going to think okay set timeout this is something that i can process and it's saying wait for two seconds so your web api is simply going to wait for two seconds and the next thing is console log three right so meanwhile your stack is empty and we discussed before that your stack can execute one task at a time now that it is empty console log three will be pushed onto the stack meanwhile your web api is still waiting because two seconds are not yet over and then what will happen obviously console log three so it will print the output as one and three right so now it has printed one and three here and now that this line is executed we can pop it off from the stack right so this will get popped off from the stack while this process was happening your web api was waiting two seconds are still not over now let's say that two seconds are over so what will the web api do inside of this set timeout there is actually a callback so this particular thing that you see this arrow function right anonymous arrow function this is actually a callback a callback is something that is executed after a certain activity is done don't worry if you don't understand callbacks we will look at it in detail but just for now understand that this piece of code needs to be executed after two seconds this is what this means okay now that two seconds are over what will the web api do we have something known as the callback queue since this is a callback this callback queue will keep a track of all your callbacks all right so now this will get popped off from here or you can say that it will not be there anymore inside of the web api and then your callback queue comes into picture and it will be pushed to your callback queue now how is a queue implemented a queue means first come first serve so let's say before this if there was some other statement console log one two and so on first those will get executed and then your console log 2 came that will get executed for simplicity let's assume now that in your callback queue we have only console log 2 now the next thing we need to focus at is your event loop right we have something called the event loop what does this event loop do it will constantly keep checking if the stack is empty and if the stack is empty is there a callback that i need to execute right so now the event loop will see okay the stack is right now empty and there is also a callback which needs to get executed which is console log 2 so then it will say okay let's push it to the stack so that we can execute this because stack is empty so now the next thing that will happen is it will get pushed to the stack and now console log 2 so we can finally print the output as 1 3 and 2 right 
so finally the output is 1 3 and 2 so this is what is happening behind the scenes now this can also get popped off from the stack all right guys so now let's just quickly revise what we just learned first if there is any asynchronous code or let's say there is set timeout it will come to the stack and your stack will say oh well this, that is not something I can execute. So then it will be pushed to the web API if it is a part of web API. Web API has many other APIs like your DOM and then you have this set timeout. So then it will be pushed to your web API. The web API is then going to say that, okay, now I have waited for a certain amount of time. It is done. Now let me push it to the callback queue. It will only push the callback part which needs to be executed. Now your event loop will keep checking if the stack is empty and then if it is empty and there is some callback that needs to be executed it will push it onto the stack and it will get executed right if there is any other statement which is getting executed in the stack currently your event loop will not push it it has to check whether it is empty or not and that's it for this video in the next video we are going to talk about the execution context which is very very important to understand all advanced javascript concepts and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get access to the complete front end interview series. See you in the next video.